Hi, Creek Smithers. It's Umpire Lafondios, and we're going to walk through the after action report for the Battle of Seno, which is part of the World War II Division Commander series, which is a series of 12 battles that go from 1940 to 1945 and are essentially a tour of what it's like to command a division in World War II. This battle was tremendous, and I had a great time umpiring it, and I had a really good time interacting with all the players afterward with respect to the lessons that they learned and the insights that they had gleaned from participating in this scenario. I'm not intelligent enough nor articulate enough to walk through this battle on my own, so I'm going to enroll the help of three tremendous artificially intelligent staff members, Matilda, Ryan, and Major Reedwell, and they're going to walk us through and actually work with each of the players to tell you a story about a battle that occurred in Russia and tell you the different challenges of the commanders they had to contend with the different elements of this battle. It's a tremendous experience, uh, and I hope you enjoy this after action review. But at this point, I'll just turn it over to you, Matilda. Matilda, take it away. Thank you, Lafondios. Let's hear the strategic background. Major Redwell? As Operation Barbarossa commences, the Germans attack into Russia along three avenues organized into army groups North, Center, and South. The 7th Panzer, a famed unit that was formerly commanded by Erwin Rommel and assigned to Army Group Center, is ordered to attack from Lepiel to Vyshebsk. Simultaneously, a newly organized Russian 7th Mechanized Corps is ordered to attack the advancing Germans near Seno. Thank you. Let's look at the command problems both sides faced. Walk us through it, Ryan. Russian command problems included a lack of radios, strict command and control, which was a product of the political climate in the country and weakened air forces. The German command problems include a lack of spare parts, which kept the divisions from repairing and reorganizing units, a shortage of infantry due to transportation problems, and fuel shortages from Russian interdiction in the rear areas. These problems are all reflected in the scenario rules you see here. Thanks, Ryan. Let's meet the teams. The German and Russian teams will now introduce themselves. General von Funk? I am General von Funk, played by Tunisgrad. I am the Division 1A, or Operations Officer, Major Schweifert, played by Designer of War. I am Colonel Tomau, played by Steven. I am Colonel von Boinberg, played by Desert Fox. I am Captain Weber, played by Hendrik. I am Captain Klein, played by Aleph. I am Major Becker, played by Chinleaf. I am Major General Vinogradov, played by Octavius Victor. I am General Ivanov, played by Chief. I am Colonel I.D. Vasilev, played by Carol. I am Colonel Ramizov, played by a username that consists only of the letter E. I am Colonel Kreiser, played by White Hussar. I am Captain Pavlov, played by Samurai. I am Lieutenant Colonel Sokolov, played by Scottish Civil War Savage. I am Lieutenant Colonel Petrov, played by Zhang Xin. Those are the commanders. Let's look at what they had to work with. You see here the respective orders of battle. This is a meeting engagement where two moving forces encounter each other. At the start of the battle, the force ratio by combat power is 1.2 German to 1 Russian. The Russians have more artillery and better tanks in their T-34s. German equipment relies on out-of-date tanks in the Panzer 1 and 2, and Czech built tanks, the T-38. We've met the commanders and reviewed their forces. Let's look at the battle zone. As the battle commences, the Russians enter from the north in Cycle 1 with two tank divisions, their motorized rifle division entering in Cycle 3. The entire German force enters from the south in Cycle 1. The purple circles show terrain that favors infantry, the red arrows terrain that favors tanks. The yellow target markers show objective areas for the scenario. Though this is the largest tank battle of the early invasion, the terrain it was fought on favored infantry. Now let's hear the battle plans from each Commander-in-Chief. Core Recon, I want you out of the gate first, preferably before sunbreak. Drive hard across the field to reach your position. Report any enemy sightings that is larger than a single battalion immediately via runner. 14th Division is following you right after, pushing hard as they mount their attack into Seno. 14th Division, hold Seno as long as you can, and provide a defensive screen for that land gap between the two lakes until the 1st Infantry set up shop at Krasny Luch. 18th Division, you follow 14th Division out of the gate and take up position on Corps Recon left flank as quickly as possible. 
defend your positions. First infantry will be at Krasny Luch in three turn cycles, so only after that will we have some amount of tactical flexibility. Our attack plan is going to consist of a main thrust under Kampfgruppe von Boineburg through the center of the map into the open ground north of Seno. This area is flanked by marshes, forests, and the town of Krasny Luch, so packing too much armor into this area would be dangerous. Thus, the Kampfgruppe Tomale will be advancing through the west, between the two lakes and to the west of Krasny Luch. 37th Recon will be attached to Tamal to act as infantry support as we're short on infantry. K7 Motorcycle Recon is to move north via the eastern part of the map to recon enemy positions in the woods there and also make sure there aren't any surprises coming up through the road to the east. Let's review the first battle reports. In cycle one through three, the units moved into position in accordance with their respective commander's plans. The Germans moved quickly to their assigned positions. The Russian 1st MRD was not yet deployed, but the 14th and 18th tank divisions moved into position. The 233rd pushed hard to the east. Let's hear from that commander. My most critical decision was rushing ahead to cut off the enemy early on in the woods, keeping eyes in the open till help arrived. The stage is set. Let's hear the Russian 14th tank commander's approach to his orders to take Seno. Send the T-26 battalions as my probe towards Seno and the flatland to its right, next to the water. I use them as a means of finding out where the enemy tanks are massed, while keeping my best battalions hidden from them. His opponent, von Boinberg, gives orders to move north in a probing attack. Panzer twos, flank left, use surprise attack. Panzer fours, attack straight ahead, use smoke. Colonel Tommel launches a probing attack from the west to the north of the lake. Company 3 and 2 shall move east to engage the enemy dug-in positions at range, taking care not to move into the woods. Meanwhile, Colonel Remizov of the 18th Tank Division, after seeing contact with his infantry, orders his division to attack north toward the enemy, not realizing they are reconnaissance units. All battalions are to swing north once the enemy to the front has been destroyed unless we destroyed all of them here, and there's no more threats to the north. The Russian 1st Motorized Rifle Division arrives, moving into position in the west. Let's listen to the orders from Colonel Kreiser, who moves units to stabilize the line. Three, five, and four battalions begin moving towards the forest, south of Krasny Luch. As we enter the mid-game of Cycle 4, these skirmishes seem small, but Major Redwell will give you a look at the impact on relative combat power. While combat power is highly dependent on command decisions in the deployment of combined arms attack and defense, we can look at the base values for an indication of how the battle is trending. The relative combat power shifts noticeably when the 14th tank and 233rd MRD take losses from armor assaults. By cycle four, the ratio of combat power has gone from 1.2 German to Russian to 1.7. The pendulum has begun swinging. Now let's go to Ryan for a classic Kriegspiel moment. And now for our Kriegspiel moment. The 1st Motorized Division Commander orders. The two recon battalions try to find out what the German troops to our west are composed of, but do not engage. And the recon commander, who is not to engage, orders. Attack the Germans in the forest. The attack goes in, is repulsed, and one of the recon units is now down to 75% strength. Thanks, Ryan. It wouldn't be Kriegspiel if there wasn't an all-out assault despite orders to the contrary. Now we'll listen to hear how the 14th tank commander made a sober assessment of his situation and made his most important call. The most critical decision on my part was to declare that I lacked the offensive power to advance on Seno. I felt that the enemy defenses were too strong and that repeated use of their artillery would reduce my command to nothing. And now his opponent, Colonel von Boinberg, talks about how his subordinate's initiative allowed him to change his approach and make his most significant decision. I was initially taking a careful, deliberate advance with liberal use of artillery, but then my subordinate took a more aggressive approach which worked, so I switched gears and threw the entire regiment forward. I then faced two different enemy regiments and split my force, using half to shield while I attacked with the other half. Here are some insights from the commander of the 18th tank and the Corps Reconnaissance Commander. The 18th Tank, after chasing the German recon unit north 
and leaving a light tank unit there to keep it pinned down, head south. It meets up with the core recon. The 18th tank commander said, I think that my most critical decision was likely me deciding to pursue the recon unit in the east with my entire division. I think it wasted time, and while it relieved my infantry and did some damage to the unit, it didn't destroy it or route it off the field. As the Corps Recon Commander, my most critical decision was when I decided to pull back from the South to establish contact with the 18th. While I think it was not necessarily an awful decision considering my lack of information and the intention of letting the tanks exploit the gap alongside the recon force, it was far too late for that. And if I had made an aggressive push ahead when I was in the South, maybe would have changed our fate. Kampfgruppe to Mail's attack in the north broke the cohesion of the Russian position and was instrumental in ending the battle. Let's hear his perspective. My decision to bypass Krasny Luke and the forest south of it, in favor of an armored attack out north of it, was my most decisive moment. Instead of attacking into their strong points, I placed my infantry to screen the movement and moved the entirety of my armor, except one company, to work on an envelopment which proved to be decisive. Three enemy infantry companies were decimated, and it paved the way for an envelopment of the enemy from the northeast. I will also say this was outlined in the original plan, so props to Division Command for the right idea. 37th Recon Commander Weber says, My most critical decision was sending some infantry and panzers around the northern flank, which allowed me to spot an enemy HQ and an artillery battery, leading to the capture of the enemy corps commander and the destruction of the battery. And the commander of the K-7 reinforced motorcycle recon says, I knew where the artillery was going to be, and I knew roughly where I needed to go, so I just tried to go get that arty. Let's have Major Redwell tie it all together in an analysis of four points that lead to the outcome we've seen in this battle. There are four connected points that help explain the deterioration of the Russian position. To understand them, you must realize that the Germans made very few errors, magnifying small misses on the Russian side. On point one, the 14th tank split its infantry and tanks, and an attack destroyed the infantry. This weakened the 14th. On point two, the Russians did not build prepared positions in the north, which resulted in that side of the line being not strong as was the line in the south. On point three, the K-7 recon moving north and the 18th tanks chasing it, slowed the 18th in its line of deployment to attack Seno. And on point four, a weakened 14th had a gap that the second element commander of the von Boinberg group exploited, which allowed that formation to move north, and that movement entangled both Russian tank divisions. This allowed the attack that destroyed the first MRD and captured the Corps headquarters. Any one of these four not happening would have freed the 18th tank to swing south and attack the Germans from the flank, as was envisioned in the original plan. Thank you, Major Redwell. Ryan, give us some statistics on combat power so we can see the battle from another perspective. Here is a chart showing the relative strength of the Russian and German combat power through all eight cycles of the scenario. You can see the Russian strength drop with the damage to four infantry battalions in cycle three. Things stay stable until the German division commander supports Tomale's attack in the north, which destroys three more infantry battalions. By scenario end, the German combat power was nearly three times that of the Russian. And the trophy is awarded to Major General von Funk, played by Tunisgrad, for a decisive German tactical victory. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that after-action review of the Battle of Senno. It was a tremendous experience, and I hope that you enjoyed this after-action review as much as we enjoyed playing it and umpiring it. If you'd like to spectate a future battle or participate, please uh, go to the notes in the video and find out how you can get involved. Uh, we always look for new blood, new players, and new thinking, and we really enjoy doing this. Uh, mostly we enjoy improving our skills. So Kriegspielers, if you enjoyed this after action review, we look forward to seeing you out on the board. Thanks so much.